Hello again. I'm Mark French. I'm a professor in the Department of Mechanical Engineering Technology at Purdue University. And this is another in a series of videos on math and engineering technology. Today I'd like to talk about one of my favorite things ever, and this is called a Cook Snowflake. It was developed in 1904 by a Swedish mathematician named Niels Fabian Helga von Cook. And it has a lot of really interesting properties and it's really easy to develop. It's a, gr a great introduction into the idea of mathematics is really the study of patterns. Um, when we learn mathematics in, in uh, elementary school or high school or college, we tend to think of it in terms of operations. If I do you know, add the numbers together in a certain way, I get this result. But it's really the study of patterns. If you look a little bit deeper, mathematics is all about patterns. And this is one of my favorites. Okay. Now the nice thing about a Cook Snowflake is that you make it by just repeatedly executing a very, very simple set of steps. Okay, and you start with an equilateral triangle. Okay, triangle with all the sides being the same length and all the angles being the same. I've, I've got a ruler here that's about a meter, so this is about a meter on a side. And the angles are all 60 degrees, the internal angles. The way you do this is on every side, you take every side and divide it into three equal parts. So if this is a meter from there to there, that's a third to there, it's a third to there, and it's a third to there. Okay? So one, two, three equals uh, parts, and I've got the other sides divided up that way as well. Now what you do is you take every side, erase the middle third, and replace it by two lengths that also are a third long to make another equilateral triangle. So this is what we'll call S0. This is this first shape. Maybe I can keep track of it over here. I've got to call it something. So I'll say S0. That's my triangle. Move those over. All right. So S1 is going to be my first iteration after I, I do this set of operations that I've just described once. Okay. And so let, let me do that. This is the only one I'm going to try with my ruler. After that, I'm just going to eyeball them because it takes too long. Okay. So if I do that, and I do this, I'll connect these others. You can see why this is kind of cumbersome to do by hand. Okay. You can kind of see what I'm going to come up with here. It's going to be the Star of David. This is the symbol on the uh, Israeli flag, I believe. Okay, this is pretty close. Now, obviously this goes a lot better if you've got graph paper and a computer and things like that. So what I've done is, let me erase this, and this, and this, there, and there. So there's the Star of David, that familiar shape. But let's look at one particular side here. It was originally, what well, still is, one meter long. This side is, this little segment is a third, that segment's a third. I erased the middle third and replaced it with two others that are also a third. So what I've got is an equilateral triangle right there. I've taken a side, divided into thirds, and replaced the middle third with an equilateral triangle that looks just like the original one, but is smaller. Mathematicians call that being similar. So this little equilateral triangle is similar to the one I started with, as are these others. Okay, so S1 is my star of David. Okay? It's just coincidence it looks like that. Now, if I did this set of operation once, this algorithm, this algorithm is a set of patterns that I'm going to execute again and again and again. Um, if I did that once, I ought to be able to do it again, right? So let's do it again. I'm going to have to eyeball this. Yeah, those look like about a third. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, there. Now, that, those little, equal, these are equilateral triangles, they're not exactly because I sketched it, but those are equilateral triangles that are also similar to this one and similar to the original. So I'm making smaller and smaller triangles and I'm putting them on these sides in the exact same way I did the first time. Anywhere I see a straight line, I divide it into thirds, erase the middle third, replace it with an equilateral triangle. So let's do some more of that. I'll try to do this quickly yet accurately. How do you suppose that's going to work? Yeah, 
not so well. That's pretty close. You get the idea here. So this, let me fix this one over here, is now we're going to call this S2 because now I've executed my algorithm three times, or two times I should say. Started with the first one, executed my algorithm once to get X1, executed again to get S2. Now, I don't know what this is called anymore. And you can keep doing. You can go on to S, and I'm going to call it S sub N, where N is a big number a big uh, integer number. That just means I've done this same set of steps n times. Well, let's try S3 just for yucks here. Let's see how far I can get. I'm just going to do a little segment here so I don't bore you to death. There we go. There's another part of this little triangle thing here. Okay, That's what more of the, the cooked snowflake is going to look like. Now, if I can do S3, I can just keep going. There's Everywhere there's a little straight line, I'll divide the line into thirds, erase the middle third, and replace it with an equilateral triangle, just like I've been doing. Okay. Now, I said S is a really big number, or N is a really big number. I actually lied. N isn't just a really big number. N goes to infinity. Now, here's there's uh, five big ideas I want to communicate here. The first is infinity. This is a really, really deep concept, and you're certainly not going to pick it up in just this one short video. Okay? But the big idea here, buckaroos and buckarets, is that infinity is not a number. It's an idea. Okay? It's not a number. No matter what number you, can, you give me, no matter how big it is, I can always add one to it and make it bigger. So it can't be a number. All right? It's this vague but very uh, important concept we have. So if I execute this infinity times, I'm going to get this infinite sort of snowflake shape. Now, when I do this, the shape I wind up with has got some really interesting properties. And this is what makes this such a, a cool thing. The first is, let's, let's talk about the perimeter, you know, the distance around the outside edge of the snowflake. Okay, let's start right here. Let's go back to that first original line, okay? That had a length of 1. When I added this to it, okay, one third, one third, one third. Okay, I took a third away, so I've got two thirds there and there, but three thirds, four thirds. When I executed my first step in the algorithm, I went from this length being one to this length being four thirds. Since there's three sides, the original perimeter was three, and the, the perimeter after I went to S1, the perimeter was four thirds times three. So P0, that's the, P is the perimeter, the distance around the outside, started out being 3. P1 was 4 thirds times 3. Guess what P2 is going to be? Same thing. 4 thirds times 4 thirds times 3. And that's the same as 4 thirds squared times 3. Well, guess what P3 is going to be? I think you might see the pattern here. 4 thirds cubed times 3. So, if n, is, if n goes to infinity, what happens to the perimeter? Well, the perimeter is just 4 thirds time to the raised to the power of the number of times I execute my algorithm times 3. So, if I execute this a million times, or uh, infinity times, I tend towards infinity. I can never get to infinity. As I tend towards to infinity, the perimeter goes to infinity. All right? Now, perimeter goes to infinity. You have an infinite length. It takes an infinite length to accurately, to completely describe a cooked snowflake. All right? Big idea there. Now, this is where it gets good. Let's say I drew a circle all the way around this. I don't know, my board's not big enough, so I can't do it. But let's say I just drew a circle all the way around it. Now the distance from there to there was one, and there to there was one, and there to there's one. Let's just say I drew a circle with a diameter of, I don't know, two or three, all the way around it. Okay? So we're absolutely sure that the snowflake lives inside that circle. Well, 
I know the area of a circle, and it's finite. It's not some infinite, vague concept. It's an actual number, all right? Because this snowflake lives inside a circle of no, you know, of a finite size, even though it has an infinite perimeter that takes an infinite length line to accurately describe the perimeter, it has a finite area. Okay, the area isn't some infinite concept. It's an actual number. And if I were to execute my algorithm, go through this, this, this triangle adding step, infinite number of times, whatever that is, what I'll find out is A as N goes to infinity. And that, that sideways 8 there, that's the symbol mathematicians use for infinity, in case you haven't seen that before. Okay? This number is 8 over 5 times A0, where A0 is the area of the original triangle. And if you know a little bit of geometry, a little trigonometry, you can figure out what the area of that original equilateral triangle is. It's not that hard to do. It's 1 half times the base times the height. So if you can figure out the height, you're good to go. Okay. The fourth in my set of big ideas, by the way, let's, let's recap here. The first big idea is the idea of infinity. Infinity is an idea, not a number. Okay, there is no such thing as a number that's infinity. The perimeter of my Cook snowflake, as I as my number of times I execute the algorithm goes to infinity, the perimeter goes to infinity. Another big idea. Big idea number three. Even though I have an infinite perimeter, I have a finite area. Big stuff there. The fourth one, the next to last idea, is that this shape is also what's called fractal. Benoit Mandelbrot invented the word fractal to describe a very, very specific set of shapes. Notice how as these, these little shapes here get, these little features get smaller and smaller. If I zoom in, they look just like the bigger ones. As the Cook snowflake gets more and more refined, as, I, as N gets bigger and bigger, and I go through my algorithm more and more times, it doesn't matter how far I zoom in, the little, little eensy weensy pieces of the Cook snowflake, when I zoom in with like a mathematical microscope, look just exactly like the big Cook snowflake. That's called self-similarity. It's the same shape no matter what uh, magnification you use. That's called fractal. So that's the fourth big idea. And the last one is something that's important mostly to mathematicians, but it turns out engineers and physicists care about this too. For reasons that I can't explain here in this short video, it's really important to know things like uh, distances and areas of curves. Okay? So there's two things that we like to have be true about a curve, you know, a shape on a piece of paper on a graph. Number one, it's very useful if it's continuous. Continuous means you can draw the curve without lifting your pencil off the paper. Well, I can draw this curve without lifting the pencil off the paper. Now it takes an infinite length to describe it, so I'm going to go through a lot of pencils. But, in theory anyway, I can draw this without lifting my pencil off the paper. The, la the thing about it being, uh, trying to calculate slopes, to calculate slopes I have to be able to look at the um, slope between two points along uh, on the curve, and those points can be really close together. But, since there's infinite detail here, there, on, on the true Cook snowflake, not this approximation, but the one where n goes to infinity, you can't calculate a slope because there's no place you can get two points close enough, or far enough apart, I guess, close enough together, where you can calculate a slope. So mathematicians call this continuous, and when, they, when they're calculating slopes, it's actually called a differential, and so mathematicians say this is nowhere differentiable. That's a big word for me. It means you can't calculate a slope anywhere. That makes it really, really interesting, very interesting from a mathematics point of view. So there you go, the Cook snowflake, a very complex shape with very interesting mathematical properties that comes from a very, very simple set of rules on how to generate it.